Our gospel reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And Jesus said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot give up, get up to give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father Give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We have any children that would like to come forward for a special children's message this morning. I invite you to come forward now. We'll take a seat on these steps. All right, you can come right up here. What is this? What do I have? What is this? Okay. Oh my goodness, and we have another one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Great. All right, I need everybody to use their imaginations. Can you use your imagination with me? Let's imagine that this is prayer, okay? Can you do that? Can we imagine together that this is prayer? Prayer can look like a lot of different things. Sometimes, can you do this with me? We close our eyes, we fold our hands, we bow our heads. We're very still and quiet. Yes, just like that. And sometimes, that's how we pray. And other times, can we stand on up and we'll maybe wiggle a little bit? Sometimes we wiggle when we pray. Sometimes we are walking around. Sometimes we're knitting something. Sometimes we're drawing something or we're walking down the street or riding our bicycles, and that's prayer too. All right, let's have a seat, and I'm going to pass out some of these to some of you. Could you help me with something? We're going to go over here. Okay. Can you take this? Would you take one of these for me, please? Could you help me? Can you help me over here? All right. So sometimes we pray by ourselves, and other times we pray together in community. And sometimes our prayer, our communal prayer kind of goes like this. Emilio, can you walk around and collect some of these prayers? So we're sort of collecting from other people who have different needs and different petitions. They kind of add them into our communal prayer. We're praying together. We're adding them in. All the different colors and shapes and orders that we put them in. I think we have a couple more over here. All right, so that's kind of like how, what, we, what happens when we pray in our community. Can you offer your little roll thing onto the stick? Can you put it on there? Great. And then our prayer kind of looks like this, okay? It kind of looks like this. And other times we take it off in their different orders. And sometimes we pray like this, and there's just maybe a few things that we pray about. But regardless of how many prayers we have, Whatever order they have, our prayer can hold that. And sometimes we pray when we're really happy. We're just excited and we can pray. Do you think we can pray when we're mad? Are we allowed to pray when we're angry? 
Yes. Are we allowed to pray when we're sad? Yeah. Are we allowed to pray when we're really confused and we're really frustrated? Yes. And sometimes we're all of those things at once. We're happy and we're angry and we're sad and we're frustrated. And our prayer can hold all of that, especially when we pray together as a community. Yeah. And let me tell you this. And even sometimes our prayer can look like this. Just simple. Just maybe a time when we're maybe quiet or breathing or singing or doing something fun. And that can be prayer too, okay? So I want you to remember that prayer can look like a whole lot of different things. Prayer can be active or still. Our prayer can be hold lots of things or just maybe one. Can it be this? It can be that, all of that, okay? So I want you to remember that. And let's, let's say a prayer together before we go. It can be this. So if you want to maybe find a prayer posture that you like, if you like closing your eyes and bowing your heads and folding your hands, do that. If you want to open your hands, if you want to wiggle just a little bit, we can do that, okay? So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for prayer. Help us remember that we can always pray with whatever we have and that your love can hold all of it. Amen. All right, thank you so much. You can head back to your seats. Okay, can you put these on this for me? Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. You can send it right down there. Thank you. Okay, you can. Beloved community, we are in week three of a four-week sermon series called Action Required. Two weeks ago, Pastor Leland preached about action required, love unconditionally. Last week, Pastor Ben preached about action required, stop and listen. And this week, our gospel text is all about prayer. And our theme is action required, persistence in prayer. And a connection I've noticed from the sermon so far is how the action required creates transformation. Loving unconditionally transforms us. As individuals and as community, stopping and listening to the word of God, to one another, being an amazement of God in our midst transforms us. And our text today is calling us to notice the ways that the action of persistent prayer transforms us. But maybe not always in the way we would expect. In the story for, the, for today, the disciples ask Jesus to teach them to pray. And Jesus teaches them a framework for prayer. And I want to highlight that the framework that is given has a communal focus, not an individual. The disciples say, teach us, plural, to pray. And Jesus says to pray, give us community. This day, our community daily bread and I want us to keep this communal focus in the center as we explore what that might mean for us. There is a lot within our text for today, but I want to focus on three parts of Jesus' teaching around persistent prayer for number one, communal daily bread. Number two, persistent praying for God's work and power to come to us. And number three, to remember that God gives good gifts. In the culture and the time period from which Jesus is speaking in our text, having daily bread meant that your needs were met. Like literally, if you had bread to eat every day, that was a sign that you were surviving, that you had access to what you needed, and that you could thrive. So when we read that phrase, daily bread, and when we pray it in the Lord's Prayer, it's this expansive phrase that represents all that we need holistically. We need food and clean water, stable housing. We need emotional connection with community. We need access to health care and education. 
We need rest, etc., etc. These things are our daily bread. And I'm still very new here at Grace, but from what I have learned so far, I can already say with confidence that prayer is a part of this community's identity and ministry. And I would even be so bold to suggest that the action of persistent prayer has already led to transformation within this very community. The quilting ministry at Grace sews blocks of fabric together into beautiful quilts, prays over those quilts, and then sends them to different organizations and places that serve people who might need those. So that daily bread need, that communal daily bread need is met. The prayer shawl ministry at Grace knits shawls while they pray that are gifted to people and families at Grace and in the greater community. And there's a prayer team here at Grace who prays at least weekly, if not more, for people and families and the concerns on our hearts. And these two ministries... I feel, are meeting our communal needs of support and connection. The praise band and our music ministry at Grace lead the whole community in prayer through song every week in worship, meeting our daily bread needs of expressing our beliefs and our concerns and our thanks in community. These are just a few examples of persistent prayer in community that focuses on giving daily bread for all and God using that persistent prayer in community to transform us. The second part of the text I want to lift up is persistent praying that God's power would come to us, that God's power would arrive, would break into the world. And the words that are used in our text say, your kingdom come. But I don't know if that always translates well for us today. God uses God's power in a very different way than a kingdom would. In fact, God's work and God's power disrupt structures like kingdoms that block or restrict or deny access to daily bread needs. In the culture in which Jesus is sharing this teaching about prayer, Fathers had all of the power in that society. It was a very hierarchical society where fathers were at the top and many times misusing their power so that in that context, a father would often be someone to be feared. So in our gospel text, praying to a loving heavenly father who we can go to with any concern or question was a disrupting of a culture where fathers, where those in power were oppressive in their use of power. So God's work and God's power that we persistently pray for, that it would come, thy kingdom come, disrupts these oppressive structures, disrupts the kingdoms and the hierarchies, and God's work opens up new models and possibilities of how we might live together so that all, community, might have our needs met, our daily bread. This past week, I had the extreme privilege to get to know many of the children in this community through Vacation Bible School. One of the many gifts of children that never ceases to surprise me is how many tough questions they can ask. And I think that these good, tough questions is a type of wisdom that's not always celebrated, which I myself need to do a better job of appreciating and valuing. And I think that part of the reason that children's tough questions are not always valued is because sometimes those questions trouble the water. Sometimes those questions, those tough questions, sort of mess up the way we used to think of something that at one time seemed neat and orderly and clear and simple, and addressing the tough questions means confronting the truth that what we once thought was simple is actually complex and kind of messy. In today's text, Jesus uses the example of children asking their parent for what they need. 
The children in our lives remind us that when life is very complex and chaotic, God does not silence us or tell us to just be quiet. But God says, keep asking questions. Keep searching for answers. Keep knocking on doors, seeking hospitality and community in new ways. And as you do, do it together. Persistent prayer in community, even in complex times, leads to transformation. And that brings me to the final point I want to highlight from our gospel reading today. God gives us good gifts. And I want to be really careful when talking about what God gives us. Because sometimes we receive messages that the hard or the painful things in our lives are given to us by God to maybe test our faith or teach us a lesson. And I want to be clear that that is not what our text is saying. And actually, I believe our text is actually pushing back on those messages and reminding us that God, our loving God, does not give us harmful gifts. God does not give someone a traumatic experience just so they can learn a lesson God does not cause someone to suffer an illness or an abusive relationship so that they can grow closer to God. Our text for today reminds us that God only gives good gifts and that these good gifts are God's work and God's power that disrupt anything that threatens our fullness of life. But this part about prayer is also complicated because what about the times that we persistently pray to God with very serious concerns that affect us, that affect those that we, who we love, and it feels like our prayers are not being answered. And I feel like these sorts of tough questions come from the wisdom of children who are bold enough to ask really complex, tough questions and to put those questions into community. So the framework that Jesus gives the disciples in our text today is a framework to sort of hold on to as we navigate the complex situations. When we're in the midst of the storm that doesn't seem to go away, when we are in the midst of tensions and heartbreak, an unexplainable tragedy when we are in the midst of hard times that challenge us in our daily lives. God calls us to persistently pray together for daily bread for all and for God's power to come to us, remembering that God gives us good gifts and that God is with us in every difficulty. So may our persistent prayer in community be done in this type of vulnerability so that God's power and God's work may come to us individually and communally through God's good gifts and create continual transformation that we might all have our daily bread. Amen.